boom. Every single one of our divisions now is the Mountaineer template. Our entirety of our army, 120 divisions, are special forces. Nice. Hey, it's Feedback Gaming, and here's Hearts of Iron 4. The reason you subscribed to this channel, or did you? I want you to comment below right now and say the reason why you subscribed to my channel. Was it Hoi 4? Was it Imperator Rome? Let me know, I'm interested. You guys like exploits? You guys like achievement runs? Let's combine them both. Single player, new game, 1936, the United Kingdom Iron Man with historical regular difficulty. Let's go. It's been a while since I've done a light goal, so if you want to show your passion for Hearts of Iron 4 and achievement runs, if this video gets 10,000 likes, I'll do another Hoi 4 achievement run. 10k likes, and then another Hoi 4 achievement run. Can. We. Do it. Anyway, the United Kingdom, what achievement are we doing today? We are going to do Blitzkrieg and William Wallace. Both of them involve going monarchist. To put it in simpler terms, Blitzkrieg take out France. William Wallace take out USA. That's it. Let's do that. And let's do that with unlimited special forces. That's right. There's a cap on special forces. If you're thinking, oh, Dave, come on. We've had the unlimited special forces already. This method is easier and way more efficient. And you are going to love it. Trust me. All right. First of all, shift left click on undersigned divisions. Right click them to an army. See hotkey, draw a front line. Control or left click to assign them all to that front line. They will all move across all the world to this exact point so they're all gathered in one place. And while we're at it, we're going to shift and left click on exercise to get them to level three. Free civilian factories, we're going to build them all in the key areas London, all 80% here and 80% here and here. Perfect. We're not going to bother with air, we're not going to bother with tanks. The, the ships that are currently in construction will get rid and we'll make a bunch of submarines. This is the bathtub strategy where you just make make the lowest grade, cheapest possible submarines. That's right, look at them. Sub ones, cheap engine, cheap torpedoes. Cheapest possible. And you spam out a ton of them. We'll have two in support equipment, three in artillery. We'll add a new production line of AA, two in AA, and the rest will go into infantry equipment. Perfect. Research. We'll go for uh, mechanical computing. We'll go for basic machine tools. We'll go for construction. And we'll also go for Mountaineers. That's right, Mountaineers. Just a brief rundown on Mountaineers and how they differ from basic infantry. They have less HP, meaning when they suffer losses in combat, they'll take more losses to equipment as well as manpower. So they're kind of more fragile, but they have slightly more breakthrough, they have slightly more division recovery, they have slightly more organization, and they get a very hefty attack and movement speed bonus in mountains and hills. Very big. But not only that, there are quite a few technologies that will buff them even further. Extra 5% soft attack, an extra 5% soft attack there as well, plus lots of extra organization along the way as well. Let's go. First focus we're going to go for is a change of course. F2 for the Navy, shift left click on all the task forces, right click them on reserves, click on the reserve icon, press G to merge them up. F3 for the planes, and left click and select them all, apart from the ones that are on carriers because we don't want those ones. Yep, there's a few in Egypt and Yemen, and I think that's it. Yep, there's some in Singapore too, and then we'll bring them all back home and merge them up. Done. Okay, five speed. Let's us go 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 king george has died f all right a change of course is done we need to go for the king's party next but we can't because we have to navigate through an event chain first so in the meantime we'll go for limited rearmament for the civilian factories let's merge the air wings and 200 and 200 and then we'll click our new button this was added in the latest patch which simply just duplicates the existing air wings. Perfect. And then we'll hit shift and left click on pilot exercises to get these up to level three. One other thing I'm going to do too is if you navigate to occupied territories, we're going to change it from civilian oversight for all our overseas territories to local police force. This will result in less garrisons being used and also more resistance in those territories. The downside though is we don't build compliance as quickly, which is something we're not really caring that much about in the short term. If we click this and check the weapons, we'll be flooded with an extra 3,000 weapons. After limited rearmament, we are going to go for reinforce the empire for the stability. 150 political power. First one we're going to go for is early mobilization, just so we can start pumping out those factories a lot quicker. We'll also go for a dispersed industry. We're going to go for construction 2 next, and we're going to go for superior firepower, because 
It's superior. Lol. Okay, this is the event chain for Monarchist Britain. And the one you want to go for is insist on the royal marriage. Next focus is we're going to go for, because we can't select anything else, is going to be service overseas and encourage colonial elite for the research. Now you're going to be bombarded with events. Always go for the top one to push on with the marriage. Okay, you're going to work on a little bit more soft attack from the artillery, so go for interwar artillery. Set a date and continue with the marriage. Okay, I want to set up for a naval invasion. So I'm going to select infantry by double clicking on them. It selects all of that kind. And I'm going to do a naval invasion order from Portsmouth on Cherbourg. Okay, gonna go for limited conscription. Once again, push on with the Royal Marriage. Got a little bit of combat XP right now, so I'm gonna add on an extra artillery battalion to this division. I'm gonna exercise them to get them all to level three again. Continue to support the king and persist with the marriage. We have now got a fallen government, which ironically is exactly how parliament looks at the moment. Huh, continue on. Unfortunately, the colonies are broken away. Oh no. We've just finished Encourage Colonial Elite, which is Kind of strange, because we've just lost our colonies, okay? Right now, we're not going to sit on a focus. We're just going to sit a while, because we need to wait for this one to become act. Going to go for our basic support weapons, working on our industry and production, as well as continuing construction as well. The Royal Marriage of Edward VIII. It is done. Now we get to select the King's Party. Let's sort out our army and navy, so... These divisions are all in the right place, uh, but all the other ones are not. We'll break the ones off that aren't doing the naval invasion. Give him a field marshal. We'll go for Montgomery. Pop them underneath Montgomery. And we'll select the armies in question. Look for ones that good attack. Oliver, you are a fantastic attacker. And Cunningham is second in line. So all of these extra infantry divisions, will pop them on the back of this guy, even though they're not going to do the naval invasion. And we'll give it a slightly different icon. That looks good to me. Regarding the Navy, I'm going to right click on the subs and break all the subs off. Select the main force and pop it here. I'm going to put you guys on strike force in the English channel. Actually, pop them on Cornwall and then we can say strike force English channel as well as the Western approaches. So what strike force is, is an order to only leave port when you're about to engage the enemy. So when we've spotted them, we know where they are, they'll move out and engage them. That way we'll save fuel because when they're in port, they're not using any fuel. I'm going to go for lots of hefty attack. Oh, that's lots of attack. And then the sub fleet will go for this guy because he is a spotter. Perfect. The Air Force 2 will move that down to the south and put it in the right place, all prepared. All right, the King's Party. We are now a full monarchist government. With that too, we have this awesome national spirit that allows us to justify regardless of world tension, which we are going to do that. Unfortunately, we're lacking political power, so we're going to have to wait. We're going to have to go for God Save the King, and this will sort out the inexperienced imperialists. It is that easy, guys. You're inexperienced, 70 days later, and you're suddenly experienced. How did that work out? Amazing. Why not play a little bit differently? Let's go for field hospitals. Going to rush for Disperse 3, and then when we get Industrial Effort, we'll get a plus two bonuses for the next two techs. So this will go onto here, and then here, and this will give us a he big hefty production bonus. God Save the King is finished, so now we're getting lots of political power per day. 2.35, that's amazing. And we're just going to sit on that for a little while, just so we can justify in France. At that point, we'll continue our focus tree. 36 political power, justify on France. Next focus, we're going to go for general rearmament. British austerity, yay. Right, select the subfleet, press D a few times, split them off. I think that'll probably do four. Task forces looks perfect to me. And then we'll put them on convoy raiding here, here, and here. And probably here too. We'll send them back to base now because we don't actually want them to participate in convoy raiding right this very second. So we'll just put hold. But when we activate the plan again, it'll go back to those four areas. What also we need to do is go into production and assign this into the theater. And what will happen, I take losses in these task forces. They will auto reinforce to 30, 30, 29, 29. And also will auto split off when damaged as well. When we occupy a lot of enemy territory, we're going to end up using a lot of guns. The reason why is we're going to need garrisons to hold that territory. If you're looking to occupy territories, currently 22,000 of our men and 2,000 of our guns are being used just to hold down garrisons. This will triple, maybe even quadruple when we take out France. So it's something to be aware of. But that's why right, we've got a massive surplus of guns. The one division trick is dead, unfortunately, guys. I'm so sorry to break it to you, but you can't one division trick anymore. So we need to find alternative ways of getting army experience. And one of those ways is to send an attache to China uh, to grind XP against the Japanese. Also, next focus is we're going to go for the shadow scheme and work our way down the industry and research techs. Focuses. Going to slap on an extra artillery battalion onto you. And once again, we are going to exercise them to level three we're gonna queue up some naval bases in labrador and some infrastructure too which will be explained later why does
does Canada have Japan's collar? No idea. Just merged up my subs again, and I'm gonna hold shift and left click on exercise just to get them to a nice sufficient level. Also gonna go for signal companies as well, which I will explain later on. Also gonna slap on some reconnaissance as well. We'll go for a cavalry one just to minimize equipment usage. And why not, while I'm at it, some AA too. All right, I'm gonna convert all of these old divisions to our new artillery infantry. Now these guys are fully reinforced and full strength, so that's good, so they can do lots of damage. But these guys can sit on the front line at the back where the lower level of strength and waiting for reinforcements. I think what I'm gonna do as well is help out the Chinese. I'm gonna lens lease them some of our older guns. We'll send them 3,000 old guns once. Our justification on France is done. I'm gonna wait a little bit while longer. I've got until the 14th of February, so I'm just gonna wait for these guys to exercise. Okay, so they've still got disjointed government. If I take Sherborne, Calais, and Paris, they will collapse. And they don't have any allies at the moment, so we get to have their entire overseas colonial empire. Beautiful. Okay, industrial effort is now done. And what I'm gonna invest into now is progressing down this focus tree. So we're gonna go for consolidate the British Isles to get a war goal on Ireland. Most of these now are ticking up to level three and we'll stop for now because we need to attack. First thing we do is engage our naval invasion and see if we can land onto Cherbourg. And we'll also activate our subs to stop exercising and to do convoy raiding. Good. Let's go for infantry expert. This will give our infantry just a slight bit of bite when we do land. We're going to declare and we're immediately going to launch our naval invasion. Are there any troops here? They aren't any troops here. Oh god. Damn, that was so lucky. And we have landed. Beautiful. What I'm going to do is make a front line there. And an attack order here. And we'll also grab a few other divisions that's on the mainland. We get the full 24. Make sure we control click onto the front line to make sure they all move there. And tell you guys to attack and go, go, go. One thing I am going to do is leave one guy behind and tell him to disable his order. So he's got that exclamation mark, meaning he hasn't got an order assigned. Select our air force, left click into northern France. Oh, Western France, they've changed the name of it. And go for air superiority and close air support with more air crews for their extra coverage and efficiency. Pushing out initially, that's good. Therefore, we can get lots and lots of supply. It looks like we are doing lots and lots of damage. Manually micro and everyone, if we can get a front line where we cut off Brittany, that would be ideal. I think it is time now. Yeah, that's good. I think we've cut them off. Yeah, we have. And then we continue to push out and just eat all this land up and we're doing some decent damage against them done one little trick that works quite well is you press h if you've got troops that are not on the front line stops them moving then they'll get their plans back then you control b and this will auto railroad them to the front line therefore no stragglers at the back everyone moves forward and this guy doesn't need to hold share bar anymore he can go 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 and right now, I'd normally stop and build planning bonus, then do a more coordinated attack. But right this very second, we're winning and we're completely decimating them across the whole front line. So just keep going, guys. So we'll bring our air force over and start hitting northern France. Oh, too many planes here. I need to move a few of them over. One, two. There we go. Okay, we're going to go for reconnaissance companies now. Upgrade them further and also some more signals. What I need to do too is start producing some motorized and also start producing some interwar armored cars. Armored cars give more reconnaissance. More reconnaissance results in better tactics in battle. We tried to perform a tactics there and they counted us and the result is they get a damage bonus. If we roll in better tactics, we'll end up doing more damage in battle. And more reconnaissance is the secret to that. And also the motorized is going to be used for the signal companies as well as the field hospitals. And we'll have two of those as well. Assign them over. There we go. I'm going to select the army now and put them on aggressive that means that they'll even attack now if the chances of winning aren't certain so that means they'll branch out a lot quicker and start gobbling up lots of land if we click here we can see they're currently 96 percent capitulated and if they lose paris it is definitely over by the looks of things it's done goodbye france free france left click on take all states all of them british franco Union. Oh my damn. How beautiful is that? Beautiful. I'm going to train these guys, 12 of them. Pop them here. And then we'll also make a separate group, another 24. Even though they're not particularly strong divisions. We can make some more submarines, so why not? Pop them on reserve. Send you guys back home. And as you can see now, the resistance is increasing. And as you can see on occupied territory, and if you go into equipment details, 86,000 manpower required. And at the moment, it's just under 3,000 guns. But that's, as you can see, that is ticking up. It's going to require a total of 8,000 guns. And that's the reason why we, we produce so many for the stockpile. Once again, I also want to make sure that I put everyone on local police force too. Okay, this quite typically happens, this. 
Once we get a justification on Ireland through our focus tree, it gets guaranteed by Canada. If we go back on the factions map mode, we can see the Commonwealth of Nations, aka the ex-allies, are a part of Canada's faction. And they're the only nation that is a major, not because they're particularly large and powerful, just solely because they are the leader of the faction, because that's the way majors work in Hearts of Iron 4. We're going to select these 24 divisions. We're going to make a front line in, I think this is Labrador. I said it was Newfoundland. It's Labrador. Never mind. And then make a front line in Canada. Move them all over. Next focus we're going to go for is the Royal Ordnance Factories for juicy six military factories. The one thing you'll notice, due to the resistance and the new occupation system, even though we've occupied all of France, we haven't gained all their factories, because completely Appliance is so low right now, they're not going to work for us. In this scenario, as you can see, it's not made a lot big difference to our production of military equipment right now. When we build compliance, then we'll start to get more and more French factories helping us out. These 12 divisions, we'll exercise them and put them on the front line of Ireland. Okay, I'm going to go for organization first. I would have normally gone for thorough planning. Extra 10% planning, extra 10% attack, it's pretty useful. If you're fighting a foe that has an equal amount of firepower than you, you tend to have that really significant edge if you've got more reinforce rate. But it's something I've started to do recently. And that is also the reason why we're going to slap on signal companies. What I'm also going to do is take off the engineer and replace that with a field hospital. And this is more of an ideal template I want to stick with for the time being. But one thing that has happened now is we're low on support equipment. And that is something that could become a really bad problem and can come back to bite you. So I'm going to assign 10 support equipment factories and reduce the motorized down to one because we already got lots of motorized banked. Okay, we're going to need a higher naval dot yard and slightly higher infrastructure as well the divisions we're training are almost done we'll just drop them off early 12 divisions they're going to be converted over into our main infantry force and pop them um i guess we i guess we just leave them at home for the time being and the other 24 we're going to assign that to a new army group and uh you'll do pop them on the front line of south africa all right, now I'm going to progress down the monarchist path and we are going to go for reassess the colonial commitments because this removes the war to end all wars, which reduces our manpower massively. That one. That's nasty. Bad. All right, now we can go for the boosts for Disperse Industry 4 and 5, which we'll get on that immediately. Also going to go for Isolate Mediterranean Threat, which means Italy leaves the Axis. All right, all our plans are ready. All our troops are organized. Let us declare on Ireland. The result of that is Canada will instantly join the war. So go. What we'll also do is select our air wings and assign them onto that general that's doing all the legwork here. I'll select you guys and assign onto that guy. That way I don't have to take care of it. And plus it's not going to be a tough fight anyway, so I don't need, I don't need to micromanage that and mid-max that. Right, I'm going to use the opportunity to go for partial mobilization. I'm going to use you guys to push in to Ireland. Mop them up. And if you've done it correctly, you should be at war with all the ex-allies. Now, South Africa does this quite often. Because you've got so many troops on their front line, they see you as a big threat. So they end up not joining the alliance. Now, we can't have that. So what I'm going to do is manually justify. It only takes 65 days anyway. The fall of Ireland. Take Dublin and Cork. And that's them done. Got them. Canada, on the other hand, they're going to put up more of a fight. Once again, select the guys on the back. Shift left click, draw boxes. Control B to railroad them to the front line. Therefore, these stragglers at the back are moving so slow because of the large state and the slow movement speed. They can catch up and actually get into the combat and start doing damage. America would like to lend these to some guns. Well, now you know it, guys. The Americans hate the Irish and also the Canadians. Apparently, equally. Okay, just to keep you up to date with the research, we're working on Mountaineers, which we'll invest into later. Build hospitals as well as doctrines, as well as pushing for four and five to disperse industry. All right, next focus I'm going to go for is alliance with Germany, and that is the first achievement. Britskrieg, be in a faction with Germany and occupy France. Okay, I'm just going to organize all this front line because right now these look very disorganized. So I'm just going to stop the plan, press H to halt, control B to move them all to the front line, get them all in the front line, and now they're in position, build organization, build a little bit of planning bonus, and go. Okay, justification on South Africa is done, and we will go. All we need to do is occupy a tiny amount of their land, literally the tiniest amount. One of these provinces will do. There we go, that will do. Okay, having a little bit of problem with fuel, and that is going to be an issue later on. So what I'm going to do is ask for a lot of fuel from the Soviet Union just to build a big stockpile, as well as make up for the losses. Alliance with Germany. Britskrieg! Achievement unlocked. Right, we need to import... A bit of fuel from the Soviets, not only to make up for our losses, but also to build a healthy stockpile for later on, which we are definitely going to need. It is time to execute the secret weapon. Special Air Service. S-A-S? Hmm. I think this is the very first time I've ever started to research this. The bonus for this is 
horrifically bad. The extra defense and organization, that's pretty good. That's okay. It's not amazing, but it's okay. Supply out of grace factor. Once again, a very small buff. This one is really worth it. Extra soft attack, organization, and once again, more supply out of grace. The only problem is it's like 1944 tech. Oswald Mosley, the economic reformer. Hmm. Okay, next up, we need to progress down this part of the focus tree, and we need to appeal to the Imperial Loyalists. I can't complete this focus. We need to get down to here to unite the Anglosphere. I'm going to make a few planes now, only once again a handful, just a little bit of close air support, a little bit of bombers, just a tiny little bit. I'm going to train a bunch of new divisions as well. 48. Two army groups oh and america would like to send us some springfield rifles don't mind if i do we have peace south africa canada ireland end all right let's deploy those divisions drop them off two army groups split them s pop them underneath that field marshal just drag them under just avoid supply problems i'm going to max out that port in nova scotia as well as max out the infrastructure along the border we're going to select a template of some kind uh, we will select the colonial one and we'll duplicate it and we'll give it a different icon. We'll go for the star. So this is how the exploit works. You select the, all of the divisions you want to convert to special forces. In this case, it would be the infantry template one. And you're saying, but Dave, if we look at that template, that's not a special forces. It isn't right now. Now we open the pop-up box to change it. This is what it thinks it's going to be changed into. Wrong. Mountaineers. Lots. And lots of mountaineers. A ridiculous amount of mountaineers. 20 to be precise. With light reconnaissance, support artillery, field hospitals, signal companies, and anti-air. Elite. Save. And the game hasn't quite twigged on that we've changed this template. Boom. Every single one of our divisions now is the mountaineer template. Our entirety of our army, 120 divisions, are special forces. Nice. Now the cherry on top... If you go into military high command, you've got this guy, David Sterling. 20% attack, 20% defense for commandos. Amazing. Only problem now is that it's just used up an incredibly huge amount of equipment. A ridiculous amount of equipment. So unfortunately, we're going to have to sort that out now. A few more civilian factories and the rest in the interior of Britain is going to be mills. We need those mills right now. And the entirety of this army needs to be exercised. Shift, left click, and off they go. Everything needs to be level three. Now, don't get me wrong. This is really cool. An entirety of army of special forces. That's really sweet. Uh, but this isn't realistic. It's going to take me 2,000 days to sort out that gun problem. Yeah, so that's probably not realistic. So we'll have to convert these secondary armies just back to the colonials again. These guys can be on the border here, here, and here. Where everyone else can be on the border to the east. There we go. Need to get as much fuel as I possibly can to fill our reserves up. So I'm going to go max with America. 83. If they only knew what was coming out. 17 days, 16 days until we filled out our reserves. And that'd be enough to keep us going for a little while. This is one of the very few situations which I would actually recommend making a few fuel silos. But it's a little bit late now. Right, the BSA company is really important right now. Reducing the cost of guns by 10% is going to help us out. So one of the issues you run into with this strategy is the amount of manpower you'll have to put aside for garrisons is just ridiculous. 100,000. 9,000 guns just for garrison purposes. They do a few things to increase stability. Stability will reduce resistance. Now, first of all, we'll go for worker conditions. One new feature I've forgotten about is you can request garrison support. So I'm going to ask that from British Slayer, and they've given us 16k manpower. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. All right, this is the focus we need to go for, and you can't manually justify against the United States. You have to go for this focus. It's important that you not be able to form the United States. The United Kingdom of the United States. The United States of the United Kingdom. The Kingdom of the States. Put it that way. And also as a bonus, we get cores on Ireland, which is going to give us a bit more manpower, which is going to be really useful. Almost the full army group at level five. Okay, the focus is just complete for an extra 10% for non-core manpower. How much does that equate to? It looks like we're never going to get enough manpower unless we go for extensive conscription. I may regret this. Let's go. Oh, they don't, they're not attacking. That's good. And then I can hop on to service by requirement. And I'm going to go for army training to get them trained incredibly quickly too. Oh, there we go. Half a million manpower just appears out of the blue. Perfect. Let's get these convoys over here and start doing some damage. Convoys throughout practically all of the Atlantic. Okay, let's do some little cheeky pushes. Just little ones. I always like to separate the north of New England. There we go. A nice slice. There we go. We've finally managed to bounce 
the loss of guns, finally. We've only assigned 61 factories to it. Only 61, guys. Only a few. We pull off the incredibly risky move of exercising on the front line of America. I think right now, though, they're not even that strong. 110 divisions. And with this massive front line, it's going to be really difficult to muster up the forces onto one point. Here we go. All level three, all full strength. Finally, it is time to go. Go, go, go. That is a sight for sore eyes. Oh my goodness. All green bubbles. Wait, no. I didn't see that. I didn't see that one either. <laughs> if the field hospitals work effectively, what should be happening is they should be gaining XP quicker than they're losing it due to the combat. And hopefully I should end up with divisions with really high experience. Let's see if field hospitals are even worth it. This is going to be the demo, right? This front line's collapsed right now and there are gaps starting to form. In that case, I always take advantage of those gaps because it will cause the AI to shuffle their troops and then put themselves in a situation where you can just walk around them. Okay, they've uh, decided to join the Australian Alliance. Hmm. Probably should have taken care of that. But it doesn't matter because what I've just done now is made a convoy raiding route all the way over to the Pacific. All right, we've got lots of excess guns now. So I've changed all this over to uh, civilian oversight. That way we gain compliance quicker. And that way we can take advantage of factories and manpower from occupied territories. Making good gains, little encirclements, always good. Regarding research and working more on our commandos. Extra upgrades for the commandos once again with the anti-air. Working on trade interdiction to make our subjects a little bit well-rounded and obviously doctrines to boost the soft attack. Let's reorganize the front line, just draw them once again. Front line, once again. Remember the hotkeys Z and X. Z for the front line and X for the front line. Mexico's joined them as well. Okay, second wave, go. Go, go, go. Right, the front line is broken. I'm going to put them on aggressive now. That means they'll make more aggressive pushes forward, particularly in these areas to the east where it's already crumbled. I'm going to make a jump and push for the ports to avoid them escaping. All right, let's form an intelligence agency. It's going to be Feedback Intelligence. That's a unique name. And we're just going to go down the route of cryptology. Okay, don't forget to go for Infantry Expert when it becomes available. Uh, the extra bonus of 10% attack is pretty big. USA is gone okay we're gonna break off you guys and then you guys are gonna go on the border of mexico and you guys can take out alaska meanwhile this army is gonna make its way over to british malaya more cryptology you know funnily enough when i assigned this army to go to malaya i thought they'd go eastward but they've gone westward oh yeah we live on a planet. I forget about that. Naval invasion from Singapore to Darwin on Australia. There we go. Make this division a little bit different. Uh, we'll slop on some artillery and we'll give it all the bells and whistles. All right, Mexico is pretty easy. Just push and collapse. Oh, and Germany's taken out the Soviet Union. Wow, that was record time. There we go. Gone. I'm not sure why, but uh, Perth doesn't have any divisions in it. I wonder if that's a reoccurring theme. So what we should do right now, grab a single division, just the one, and land there. Probably need... And off he goes. And there we go. Move everyone else over and take care of this. Need a big port and we'll build a big infrastructure. All right, we made a breakout. And I think it's time just to push. There we go. Uh, take all the United States first, because otherwise Japan might try and take a buy out of this, which I definitely don't want to happen. And there we go. Anyway. We are not done yet. We need to declare an American monarchy. Washington will be renamed to Wallington. The United Kingdom of the United States. Wallington. <laughs> and just for the laws, check out the titles. Countess of Long Island. Grand Socialite. Protector of Liberty. Avenger of the Boston Tea Party. I like the sound of that. And then the final thing to do, check occupied territories and release... Scotland as a puppet. Done. William Wallace. Achievement unlocked. Voila. And uh, for the lols, let's release Occitania because I've never seen it before. There we go. The British Southern France. <laughs> and if I release Free France, I get Bourbon France. <laughs> 10,000 likes on this video, guys. And we will see another video just like this for another achievement. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget if you don't ring the bell, your subscription means absolutely nothing. Have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.